We were going to follow bus. This is hard enough as it is. How complicated is this? So that's that's the replacement side, and we've got a replacement side on the pillar over here. There's no staff about to work. Oh, is the geezer over there in a the high vis? Hi, this is Photo How To, a channel completely dedicated to photography. We have no idea what we're doing here. Thank you. So the uh, train journey is about 40, 45 minutes from here, from the airport. We're getting a bus, so God knows how long this is going to take. In today's video, we will take you on a visual journey to Berlin's most captivating photography hotspots. That almost sounds poetic. <laughs> the bus has only dropped us off like a few stops down the line, so we now got to get on the uh, well, the train. Oh man, get the right work out. So, I think the train's in a couple of minutes. So yeah, what we've got to do is put your ticket in this sort of machine thing there, like that, see the arrow? What's it doing? Why is it doing stuff? I want to say something, but I can't think what I'm trying to say. I've got to summarise Berlin somehow. Did you know that Berlin is home to some of the most dynamic and dramatic photography scenes in Europe? That is a bold statement. But did it live up to my expectations? Well, that is a photograph, to be honest. Berlin, a city that effortlessly blends vibrant culture and rich history, creating a photographer's paradise. Hang on a minute, we need to add a little bit of drama. From the remnants of the Berlin Wall to the grandeur of the Brandenburg Gate, every corner of this city tells a story waiting to be captured. Finding the best spots to capture the essence of Berlin can be a challenge, even for the most seasoned photographers. <laughs> With so much to see and explore, it's easy to get overwhelmed. From navigating winding streets of the Kreisberg to avoiding the tourist traps of the Mitte, it takes a keen eye and a sense of adventure to uncover the city's hidden gems. German's capital is lavish with history, and as a photographer, I found myself drawn into its past as I discovered remnants of a long time ago. The sheer size of Berlin can be daunting, and it's easy to get lost in a sea of concrete and steel. 
but with a little persistence and curiosity, the city begins to reveal its secrets and the perfect shot is just around the corner. From dramatic architecture to the tranquil gardens of Charlottenburg, Berlin is a city that rewards the curious and the brave. Right, I'm currently scouting shots. Uh, so I've done a lot of uh, street photography, but I have got my tripod and some filters with me, so I'm just looking for opportunities here really. But this building here behind me, uh, that one, that does really interest me. I can also see there is reflections in the water, so if I have to put like a 10 stop on there and shoot for like 20 30 seconds, I should get a really nice reflection. The only problem I have got is I've only got a 24 70, I ain't got a wide angle, then, so that's going to pose a problem. But the minute up there, there's a lot of people out, so. I don't know if this place lights up at night, that's the only problem, but I'm sort of tempted to stay till it gets a bit darker. Um, the sun's sort of due to set soon, so I'm just going to see what happens. So I'm going to walk up here and see if there's another shot. Interesting. Just uh, a bit too much clutter, I'm afraid, but I really like the underside of the bridge, that looks really cool. But too much stuff in the ground unfortunately, it's messy, but there is something down here I saw earlier, so let's go have a look. I saw these uh, big metal, I don't know what they are, little struts I suppose off the bridge. I'm just going to pan you around in a sec so you can have a butcher's. Um, pan you around there. Obviously they disappear into the water, so if you shoot a long exposure shot, uh, I'm going to have to shoot for quite a while I think. Um, still a 10 stop gives me to start off with. I need to be shooting for a few minutes just to get rid of the people in the shot, but that will completely freeze the water and we'll get some really nice reflections of the buildings in the water. So I'm afraid a 10 stop and see what it gives me. I really don't I hope I have to use a 15 stop because I'm going to be sitting here all night. What is that? Ah. Oh. As photographers, we're constantly on the lookout for that one shot that captures the essence of the city. But Berlin has a way of surprising you, of revealing new angles and perspectives that challenge your creativity and push you to think outside the box. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a beginner, Berlin has something for everyone and the thrill of the hunt is all part of the fun. The thrill of the hunt is all part of the fun. It's just like... Right, okay, I've put a 10 stop in. I've had to increase it to F11, uh, ISO is 100, and it's given me 60 seconds, so I'm going to see how that comes out. The other thing also is boats going past. That is going to be a problem, because uh, boats have got lights on them, and we're going to get light strings through the shot. So yeah, I know the boats will stop at some stage. I'm just going to see if this looks, this looks like a nice composition. If it is, and I've literally just got to sit here and wait, which might be an hour or so before the boats finish. That's life, I'm afraid. You want your shot? Got to be patient. Yeah, you see on the top of the boat there, I don't know if you can pick it up or not, but there's a small red light and a small white one. In theory, because uh, the camera's shooting long exposure, it should pick it up as a light stream, but we'll see. It actually looks like it's finished. So, let's have a look on the back of the camera. Oh, that's not bad, actually. That's not bad, if I might say so myself. That's a really nice shot, and there's no light streams in it either. I'm really pleased with that. God, I'm good. It's just pot luck, it really is. It's literally, I can't see around the corner, I can't see if a boat's coming, so I'm hitting the uh, shutter button, starting to shoot, and it's shooting for like, uh, I think it's 60 seconds, that's a minute. And it's wherever a boat comes through, and um, I've literally just got this boat coming through now. And my photograph has just finished, so let's have a look see if it's got it in the shot. I can't see it, it should be there. Um, that's really frustrating. I won't know till I get home, so I think this is really important why you should take more than one photograph. If you set up, to be honest, if you've got the time, take about 10 shots because you don't want to get home and find that every single one's got something in it that you don't like. So, yeah, play it safe, guys. Berlin streets are a treasure trove of captivating photography spots. 
each with its own unique character and charm. Each location has a story to tell and a lesson to teach. There's the iconic Brandenburg Gate, a symbol of Berlin's resilience and strength, where the grandeur of the past meets the excitement of the present. If I had to choose just one spot that stands out as the ultimate destination for street photography, it would have to be the long walk along the spree. There's something about the way the light falls on the buildings, casting long shadows and emphasising the bold, brutalist lines of the architecture. This is also a great location for sunrise and sunset. There's a really cool building down there, the reflections. It looks like a cube. Uh, there's some really good reflections in this building here. Um, I can actually see the clouds in it, so I'm gonna go and shoot that next. That's one awesome building. The only issue I'm having with this, this is a difficulty when you're doing this sort of cityscape photography, is that obviously you've got people in your shot. Unless you come out like first thing in the morning or people go to bed early at night, which is doubtful. And I'm also keeping an eye and see if we've got a sunset. Uh, I think we're about half hour off it in a minute, so I'm keeping an eye on the clouds, but I really like that building. We're trying to get a really good composition, it's difficult, because uh, either people are in the way, or, I don't know, walkways are in the way, or it just, it looks messy, there's dustbins, or there's something in the way, pretty much, so, I mean, I can shoot this here. I think I will still shoot this, and see if I could do something uh, in post. I'll have to crop it, possibly, maybe have no foreground interest, and possibly get the reflection in the water. Um, and the other thing also, I've only got 2470, so I don't know um, if I'm gonna be able to get the whole thing in the shot. Finally, <laughs> I've got a travel tripod, because um, we're traveling light for this trip. But I could put, I've got a three-legged thing, so I could put this in portrait mode, but I don't know if I trust this tripod so close to the edge of the water, it'll probably end up going over, so I'm not gonna risk it for a biscuit. This is really frustrating. I finally got a sunset in Berlin. Got a good, really good composition. Um, however, because it's dipped down, um, I'm having to shoot for around about 120 seconds. So I've got to time this right because this is the problem I've got. Now, I'm not sure if he's coming back, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hit the button and pray because I am gonna lose the color and that sky looks absolutely amazing. I don't think this camera is doing that sky justice one bit. Wow. What out what? Look at the color in the water. Look at it. Oh. So I'm shooting with a Z7 II with a 2470 uh, 2.8. However, I'm shooting for 120 seconds and I've got to show you this feature because I absolutely love this feature on the Z7 II. I don't think you can see there, uh, where's my finger, there? on the display screen, it's giving me a countdown. I'm currently on 20 seconds to go. That's so great, so no more having to use my watch to count down how many seconds I've got before the photograph's actually uh, finished. What a great feature. Look at the sky behind me. Oh man, I'm missing that, look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, so I've decided to make the best out of a bad situation. We have got a fantastic sky just up there. That sky is just like, wow um, but there's no composition behind me so what do you do so I've looked here on the uh, cube building here and what we have got is some really you can see it you can actually see it here with a camera this is unedited you can see the pink reflecting on that so I'm fully utilizing that oh, I'm gonna use a reflection of the sky against the windows of that cube that's all I can do um, it's still a really nice photograph ideally I've got that cloud over the top of that cube Berlin's captivating street photography spots are a testament to the city's vibrant energy and its endless creative possibilities. It is always difficult as a photographer to select the right gear when you're traveling, going away on holiday, or going to do a shoot in a different country. In an ideal world, you would take everything, but that's not practical. For this trip, I had limited luggage space. 
So I decided to take one camera body, two lenses. I used the Nikon Z7 II just because it is a lot lighter, it's got a great sensor, shooting at a whopping 45.7 megapixels. And being lighter, it's easy to carry around and it also fits in my pocket, that's obviously without any lens on. I also took two lenses. To start off with, I took my go-to lens, a 24-70 f2.8. This lens is great because it's got a little bit of reach, 70mm, uh, but I also can shoot wide at the same time. Then I had to make an important decision. Do I go super wide and shoot with a wide angle lens such as my 14 to 30, or do I sacrifice that and use a small telephoto lens just to zoom in and capture the detail? These are types of decisions that you may have to consider when you're traveling or you're going away to do photography. But one thing I'll say to you is consider what you're shooting and maximize the possibility you have with the camera gear that you've got with you at the time. All right, the sun's just about gone down, um, so what do you do? If you've gone away, guys, question for you, put a comment down below. Did you go back to the hotel? Maybe go to the bar, have a few drinks, or would you go to bed? What do you do? You know, initially I've come here to do street photography. Luckily I had my tripod with me and a couple of filters, didn't have too many. I think you've got to take every opportunity you can as a photographer. If you're able to, try and shoot as much as you can. So I'm now going to do some low light photography. You know, there's moments in life as a photographer that you feel absolutely privileged. You know, I'm doing a 30 second uh, long exposure shot on this lovely bridge. I'm getting serenaded behind. It's magical. The city's come to life. There are literally people dancing behind me, and we're not talking like stupid dancing. It's really stylish, the sort of thing your grandparents used to do. I just cannot believe what I'm seeing. Knowing I had the option to shoot as wide as 24mm, I decided to take a telephoto lens just so I can capture smaller details that are further away. I took my 70-200 f2.8 and I love this lens because it is really sharp. It's also not extremely heavy, even when it's attached to the Z72 camera body. So over my shoulder, walking around, not a problem. I've been to a few cities now and I have to say, Berlin for me was different. It was completely different to what I expected. Coming from the UK, I've obviously got London on my doorstep. And I must say, London does offer more than Berlin, but Berlin is unique. The one thing I will say is just how wide the streets are. And I don't mean like super wide roads, although the roads are quite wide. It's just how far away the buildings are. When I walk around London, I feel like the city's been compacted where they've been basically building more and more buildings over the years. The one thing I do love about London is obviously you have old architecture with new. In Berlin, unfortunately, obviously because of World War II, a lot of the buildings now aren't standing, so they've had to restructure and rebuild. And to be honest, the city still looks great. There's plenty to shoot, whether you like street photography, or just want to capture some stunning cityscapes. It's well worth a visit. Hey. That's good, isn't it? Thanks for joining me on this short photography adventure. If you have a favourite spot in Berlin or what is your favourite city, throw a comment down below. And if you're looking for more photography tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for watching guys. Toodle bit.